Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. Today in this episode, we are going to talk all about rooms. We're going to learn about how to create a room, what is a room separation line, how to customize a room tag, and how do you calculate the total of room areas and volumes. So let's begin. So I'm going to start with this small residential design project for this tutorial. I would like to add rooms in this project, so which is why I'll go under one of my floor plan views, in this case, ground floor plan view. Here I would like to create my room boundaries. So let's go into architecture. Under room and area panel, you have a tool called room. So let's go ahead and use that tool. As soon as you activate this tool, you will see a little cross near your cursor. Now this cross currently is showing a blue boundary line around that cross, which means we are in an unenclosed space. As soon as you go near an enclosure, you will see how it's automatically detecting the enclosed space between those walls. So let's go ahead and maybe add this room over here. When you're placing this room, you have the option of tag on placement on. If you have done this, a room tag will automatically be placed. If you have placed a room without a tag on, so you can always come back here to the tag room tool and go ahead and tag your room over here. You can always select your tag, change the name of the room. Let's say let this one is kitchen. Alternatively, you can select your room, which is basically this cross. If you have a difficulty selecting this cross, just go near the room tag press tab till you find that cross and select that. This is a selection of your room. You can go to one of the properties of this and change the values as per your need. So let's change this property name as toilet and let's change the room number as T1 and this one as room one. Now when you go ahead and select this particular room, you will see in the properties that it already has computed areas, parameters and height. So it already knows that it's going from ground floor to 3050 millimeters from ground floor. So it's really important to set your limits of your bounding box of your room when you're creating them. So let's go ahead in the architecture under room. And before you place these rooms, you'll have an option of selecting upper limit here. You also have the same property in the properties palette. So let's go ahead and change this to first floor and say limit offset to zero. So depending on your project, you can set the bounding box of your room. So currently we are starting zero from the ground floor and going to the zero of the first floor, wherever that is. And let's go ahead and add a room here. Because I've switched off the tag on placement, I don't have a tag here. Now I go ahead and place the tag somewhere here. I can simply come change the name foyer. Now let's talk about areas and volumes. When I'm selecting my foyer here, you can see that I already have area computed for this one, which is 37.248 square meters. The perimeter is also calculated and unbounded height, which is already computed from the levels that we have given. However, if you see the volume is not computed. This is because we have not yet enabled the volume computations in the settings. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to the architecture tab in the room and area. Let's go to area and volume computations and switch on areas and volumes here. I'm going to switch OK to this. And if I select my foyer, you can see here that now the volume is automatically computed. Now let's check this volume in sections. Now let's me go ahead in the CC section and open this up. Now rooms not only have two dimensional properties, but also three dimensional properties, which is why you are also able to see these rooms in sections. So let's go ahead and select this room. This room is the foyer room. You can also go to architecture in the tag room and you can tag all the rooms that you have. You can also do it using annotate, tag all, going to room tags and say OK to them. So it's going to tag all the rooms that is visible in your section. Now, as far as the volumes of a rectangular cube is concerned, which is OK, how about a volume of this kind of shape? Let's go ahead in our first floor and add a room in our foyer. I go to architecture tab under room. And this time, I'm going to set my upper limit as second floor with a zero limit offset and add this room over here. And I'm going to go ahead and annotate and tag all room tags. 
So let's go back to the section. And here you see that I have my um, room starting from first floor going to the zero of the second floor. But that's not the correct volume, right? I need to also include this little attic area also in this particular room. Now in this particular case, you will see that when I extend the upper limit of my room, it automatically extends the shape of my room here. This is because the shape of my bounding box is controlled and enclosed by the room bounding elements. So if I select this particular wall, it has a property of room bounding. If I select this floor, it also has a property of room bounding, which is switched on, which means these are the elements that are used to enclose a room, not only in floor plan view, but also in a three dimensional view. Let's go ahead and add a room tag to this. And I'm going to change this to foyer again, but this is a first floor foyer and it has a different volume conditions. Now this is not going to happen if you're not calculating volumes. So if I go back to room and area and switch off computation of volumes and I'm only computing areas. So you will see that this room bounding box is not going to be enclosed in three dimensions because you're not computing volumes and the heights are not important anymore. But for our case, we really want to calculate volumes. I'm going to switch that on and you'll see the shape redefined. Now let's go back to the floor plan view and I'm going to select one of my kitchen space here. Now let's talk about the boundaries of this room. Currently this boundary is set to the fin wall finish layers. So the room boundary is going to go ahead and stop at the finish layer. If I go back to my room and area settings and change this computation to at wall center, you will see that my room's boundaries are extended to the center of the wall. And same thing, let's try to change that to at wall core layers, which means to the structural layer of your wall, it's going to extend all the way to the brick layer here. So depending on how you're calculating your area of your rooms, you can set the boundaries of your room. Now let's talk about this foyer room. This particular enclosure of the foyer also includes the staircase. Now I do not want to include my staircase as part of my area for the foyer, but I do not have a wall or any other room bounding element to separate the foyer and the staircase. So how do I divide this room into two? For this, there's a tool called room separator. It's a line that separates the rooms into two parts. So let's select that. And I'm going to create a boundary where I would like to create a bounding element. So this foyer, now excludes the staircase from its calculation. And now I can add another room specifically for staircase. Now these lines are visible in your print and if that is something that you don't want to have, you can go to the visibility graphics, PV is the shortcut, and you can go to your lines category and you have a line called room separation. You can switch that off. You can hide these room separator lines from your drawing if you don't want them to be printed. But if they still are there and they still are separating the rooms from each other. Now let me select my room tag here. Now this room tag is currently showing a couple of different information. It's showing the name of the room, the number of the room, and because I'm using a default room tag family that is uh, in my default library, it already comes with a couple of different types which includes area, and volume. Now, but for my project, I want to show a different information here. So how do I create a custom room tag for my project? To do this, I'll go into File, New, Family, and go to Annotations, and I have a room tag.rft template available. If you don't have a room tag.rft, you can use a generic tag and convert its category to room tag. For now, I'm going to use this room tag.rft when you will open, you'll see these two reference planes available to you, the intersection of which is going to mark your insertion point. So this is where your base point of your tag is going to be. So let's go ahead and add a label. Now we talked about the basics of this family editor in my previous video. So if you haven't watched that out, I recommend that you do. I've given you a link in the description box. So let's go and find the name parameter. I'm going to bring it down in the center 
and I'm going to change its size to two millimeters. And then I'm going to add one more parameter underneath, which is going to show me the area. I'm also going to make this two millimeters. I'm going to make it small. Now, another thing I want to add here is a line that separates the name and the area. You can create your own design the way which you would like to add your. Um, and I'm going to make this equal on both sides. I'm going to save this room tag. I'm going to call it room tag with area. I'm going to load it into the project. I'm going to select the existing room tag and change its type to room tag with area. And now you'll see that I have my room tag as per my new custom design. Go ahead and select your existing tag right click select all instances in entire project and then change all of them to the new custom tag of your design now we know the areas of individual rooms but how about calculating the total room areas of your entire floor how do i calculate the totals of my room areas for this we need to create a schedule we talked about creating component schedules and material quantity schedules in my previous episodes i'm going to give you the link in the description box creating a room area schedule is also following the same process so let's go to the view schedules and schedules or quantities and select the category of rooms here and from the available fields choose the parameters that you would like to schedule so let's go ahead and add the name maybe number, total of areas, maybe also the total of volumes. And we also want to know the level. So I'm going to add the level. And I'm going to make this up here. So first column heading is going to be level. And from then on, we can uh, find all of our rooms. I'm going to say OK to this. So we, so we now we know that which rooms are on which levels. Let's sort them based on the levels. And I'm going to go under sorting and grouping. And I'm going to sort and group by level and then probably by name. Now, in this particular case, you can see that in each of these rows, I have ground floor, ground floor, ground floor, the same name repeated over here. This is not the best way to format your schedule. So I'll go under formatting, change the level field as a hidden field. So this is not visible, but we still want to know which room is on which level. To do this, what I like to generally do is add a header and a footer underneath. So I'm going to say okay to this. So now I know that on the ground level, I have four rooms and on the first floor, I have one room. Now I also want to calculate the total of areas and volume. So I'll go back to formatting, check my area and volume and change its properties to calculate totals. So now I know that on my ground floor, the total area of my rooms is 65.31 square meters, and this is its total volume. So this is how you can create a room area schedule and find out the total area of your rooms. You can also put this on a sheet. For example, let's go to the floor plan sheet here. Instead of door schedule here, I'm going to add a room schedule over here. Now this is a floor plan only for the ground floor where I need the areas of only ground floor. So let's go back to the room schedule and filter the information that I want to put in this schedule. Let's go to filter by level, which equals to ground floor. So show me only those rooms whose level field equals ground floor. And this way I am only filtering the rooms on the ground floor. So there you go. So now you know how to create a room schedule and calculate total of room areas. But how about the gross building area? How do we calculate the total gross building area of a particular floor? That's the topic for our next episode. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.